you know, I have been, I have swam in this pond, lake. I've water skied in this lake. I've wakeboarded in this lake. And I've definitely ridden around this lake tons of times. But I've never ever stopped off Goose Pond Road and pulled in here and walked up here to actually look at the dam. And there it is. Goose Pond Dam. Feeding a river that goes into my lake. Pretty cool. I have some news. Let's um let's go on the bike. Uh, Gould Road. I've actually never been down this road before, but it does connect to the road that I want to get on to go to a little fun, um, little fun class six road that I haven't been on in a while. Last time I was on this road, well, the first time on this road, I crashed my new uh, GS. Is this it? Oh, this is it. I totally missed it. See, I've never even noticed that was there. Oh, it's muddy. It's very muddy. It's also wet leaf season here. It's rained for a few days and it's wet leaf season. Um, it's a great clip of that actually a while back. It's, you know, talking 2016, 2017. Uh, I crashed right in front of a bunch of hikers, Dartmouth hikers. Um, and then the last time I was on it was uh, dirt days. I was uh, leading a group uh, on, a, on a ride. I was a guide for one of the rides. But I, I've never noticed this road was here. I passed it 50, 60 times maybe. Um, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> I don't even know, like, where do I begin? Let's, I guess we should get, this is nice. Look at this. I guess we'll just get it out of the way and I'll, I'll talk at you for a little bit, but if you've been subscribed for a while, I do ask you to stay patient with me and watch the whole video or, you know, watch a bit of it. It's, it's, it's going to change a lot about what you're going to see here. So, uh, you know, not forever, but for a while. Um, in 10 days, I'm leaving New Hampshire. That's, that's the band-aid, <laughs> as I like to call it. The band-aid is ripped off. I'm leaving New Hampshire in 10 days. Um, why? Uh, a new job. There's a little road back there. It's not marked though. Could be an old uh, driveway to a camp. Um, where? <laughs> uh, the destination is going to be uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, I guess why, the bigger why, is what I'll try to get into this video. Uh, let's, let's take a step back though. I really want to rewind a bit. And I, oh shit, that was a good muddy thing. <laughs> that was a good mud. <laughs> it's wet back here. Um, so the bigger why, I, I want to answer that in this video, of course, and all the details will fall into place in future videos. I'm not going to answer every question today, but if you have a question, just comment below and I'll answer them. You guys know me. I, I reply to every single comment I get on this channel. Um, no, no comment goes unanswered. So, um, <laughs> that was, that was, that was a, I'm awake now. <laughs> um, by the way, it's uh, October 18th, so. Not quite November yet. Uh, we're past peak foliage though. Leaves are falling off. So fall is officially over. And I think we go down Beach Cobble Road. Does that hit Grafton Turnpike? It does. A right and then a left. Okay. Um, Let's go back a bit, and I'm gonna actually try to link to some videos uh, in the uh, in the description here or in the comments so you can watch later. But um, 
Yeah, it's been, it, it rained two inches the past 24 hours, so it's a little slick out. Um, I was born in, uh, you're like, oh God. I was born in 86, I'm 36 years old, and uh, born in Florida. I've lived all over Florida. Uh, we moved about once every year when I was a kid. And then, that's a big place. Looks brand new. Uh, yeah, brand new. They don't see traffic back here very often. Um, fuck loads of wet leaves though. Um, moved around a lot as a kid. Moved to Alabama for some time, back to Florida, all over the place in the South. Uh, when I was 19 or 20, I sold everything that I had, car, furniture, almost all my clothes, everything got sold, and I moved to San Francisco until I was about 25 years old, 24, 25. Um, I've always, I've always felt like there are certain times in your life where you have to, it's not a sacrifice, but you have to take a leap of faith. And I, I've been really lucky at my job the last 12 years at TomTom Tom to be given the opportunity to create my own reality, drive change, be a conduit, create initiatives. If, if, if they've, they've embraced, you know, if you feel passionate about something, enough, enough passion about something, go for it. And I have really, really enjoyed that freedom at TomTom Tom, uh, immensely. It's been, it has been a complete honor. And, you know, at the, at, the, at the big picture level, I've also survived a lot of change at TomTom Tom, where, you know, people have lost their jobs, uh, business strategy has shifted. Uh, the company is different than it was when I first joined in 2010 or 12 years ago. Um, but I've still been welcomed through it all, and I've still still been able to create kind of the world that I would like to have uh, within this 5,000 person company. It's been really amazing. And, um, but I, I started feeling like, I was, so I was being challenged. And it was in 2010, when I was 24, almost 25, that I flew from San Francisco to New Hampshire and started the job at TomTom. Tom. Um, but I was feeling at this job where I wanted to push myself to the next level. I wanted a bigger challenge. I wanted to even try maybe a different industry. Um, am I a one-trick pony or can I actually innovate beyond um, the world that I've played in the last 12 years at TomTom. Tom. And, and, and I'm very grateful, by the way. I have, I have uh, traveled the world at TomTom. Tom. I have met amazing people. I've spoken at events. I've worked on our 1,000-person hackathon. I've worked on our university hackathon. I've built a great uh, talent program. I have worked inside of TomTom Tom as an engineering manager, a technical project manager, uh, a map maker, uh, someone at talent acquisition, a recruiter, an HR person, an IT person, a developer, a DevOps person, a director, strategy, business cases, you know, budgeting, uh, site uh, redesigns, moving sites. I helped work on the COVID remote work task force and designed what remote work looks like for us. And we are now a, a fully hybrid company with, you know, full flexibility of location. I am so proud of what I've done at TomTom, Tom, but I started getting anxiety around, you know, me being a one-trick pony, me being uh, stuck, me losing my job at TomTom Tom at some point and being in New Hampshire, having worked at one company for 12, 15, or even 20 years. If I, I'd blink and I'd be there for 20 years. And I just did not want to I did not want life to happen to me. I wanted to get back the control over my career beyond just being a really great TomTom Tom employee. Um, there were a couple of more Excel spreadsheet reasons, you know, but I'm gonna keep those close to the chest for a couple of years. It's not uh, personnel based, nothing at all personnel based, nothing people based, nothing strategy based. Nothing uh, 
how we make money, how we do business based. Other things that just, I wanted to change and I, and, I, and I wasn't able to change. And my boss and everyone that I worked with knows those reasons. Um, but you know, to have exit interviews with the folks that are one and two levels down from the CEO of the company, uh, I, I was definitely up there. And I, I appreciate um, all they gave to me and supported me over the last few years. It's been, it's been amazing. Um, Heather is from this area. I met her here. She had lived in LA and New York City, uh, as well as DC before we met. So she's been around. Uh, all of her family is in New Hampshire, but a couple of people in, in DC, a couple of people are actually in North Carolina. And, uh, you know, she's obviously way smarter than me. She has a master's degree. She works for the federal government, but is now fully remote. Uh, she gets some locality pay adjustments. She has a great team working for her. They're all fully remote. And so she can move anywhere. She's also this amazing hustler and she's done such a great job during the pandemic of look, picking up side work and doing things for new client work on nights and weekends. And I'm just really proud of her. She has, uh, I'm not taking credit for this. She's done it all on her own. Uh, maybe I inspired her, but she has been just a total rock star. Um, you know, she's on set to surpass me in salary, uh, and she should. She's smarter than me. She has a college degree, and um, you know, just just amazing work, and not shitty work either. Like, this is work where she's actually improving the lives of veterans, and I, I I'm really proud of her, and I'm so glad that I married her. Um, I have also been moonlighting for the past few years, and again, everyone at TomTom Tom that that matters that can make a decision around this knows. They know that I'm a board member of the BMW MOA as secretary. I would love to run for a second term at the MOA if they'll have me. I am also the president of the Vermont Club. We have 452 members. I'm leaving there at the end of my term. So I'm not leaving prematurely, but I'm certainly leaving the club in places where I wish I could have done a better job. And if you're a member of the Vermont Club, uh, I, I'm sorry I couldn't get everything done that I wanted to get done. I was really distracted this year. We were, we were profitable this year. We grew in membership this year. Uh, we have a great newsletter editor. We have a great events team. I just could not get the, we needed to grow our volunteer base and I totally shitted that up. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I did my best. It was, it's a vol volunteer role. I'm proud of what I did, but I could have done more for the Vermont club. My four year term ends December 31st. So I will be at the last two meetings that are virtual. And um, I, I wish the next board of, board of directors luck. And uh, this is not goodbye. This is just a, a hiatus. Um, I tried to get the New Hampshire, Vermont, Central Riders uh, Club off the ground. It did not get that done. Uh, I, I did some work locally on photography gigs. I did some work locally with writing. Uh, my YouTube career is stagnant. That's okay. It's not a career, uh, you know, to make four to $600 a month, every month, year round for making these videos that I'm doing right now. Well, what a great, what a great side hustle to just pace the motorcycle hobby. You know, that's a good thing, right? Um, the last thing I've been doing for the last five years, and I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning this cause some people that are my clients might find this, uh, I've been moonlighting in real estate. The goal of that moonlighting was actually to get soft skills. I, I told a lot of people this, I'm very transparent. You guys know my integrity is, 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 is more important than anything else. Uh, I am 100% transparent for people. I may not tell you everything without you asking, but if someone asks me, I will tell you the entire life cycle of, of everything. Um, I told some of my early clients in the real estate management, property management business that uh, I'm learning to be a great landlord and property investment investor uh, with your investment. You know, you put the money up and I manage it. I'll make mistakes, but I'll get better. And that's why I did that for five years. Um, there are real estate property management clients that believe that was my only job. I, I would dare I say all but maybe one of them believes this is my only job that I don't that I didn't work at Apple, that I didn't start two companies in the Bay Area, that I didn't write a book about Twitter, that with Jack Dorsey writing the forward to the book. I didn't speak at, at South by Southwest and Macworld and CES, and I didn't, you know, uh, 
be an engineering manager at TomTom Tom for 12 years and all this other great stuff that I've done in my career. Um, they don't know any of that stuff about me. They think that I am a super or a property manager only. Um, and that's fine. That, that was intentional. And if you, if you watch this video or you find me on LinkedIn and you feel bamboozled, the only question I've ever had to ask them if that ever came up was, did I not do a good job <laughs> as your property manager? Because if I didn't, then you can blame me for having you know a full-time job or jobs. But if I did, if I did a great job, what's the problem? And I never lost a client in that business. And so for the last five years, I have had as many as six HOAs, all condos, um, with an average of 30 to 80 units per condo. Um, so you could say in reality, I have something like 250 to 300 units I'm managing. Um, I don't think I've ever said this on this channel at all, but you know that's as many as 500 owners and about 75 vendors. And knowing that I was making a change, I actually went to my broker, because in, in New Hampshire, you have to be an eight real licensed real estate agent to manage properties. Uh, I went to my broker who I sat under and I told her, I'm getting out of the business. Let's talk transition plans. And six months ago, we hired someone to replace me and she has increased her uh, client base, uh, one client per month. So as of now, I have no clients left. She's taken all of them off of my plate and um, I go to my last my, my last HOA board meeting next week, in which case uh, that'll be that. They're in her hands now and she will be uh, the property manager for six HOAs in New Hampshire and I have zero doubts that she's gonna do a great job. Even though property management was a huge learning opportunity for me. I mean, I oversaw million dollar deck replacement projects, $200,000 pool replacement projects, $500,000 fire alarm replacement projects. We're not talking about HOAs where you just say, hire a landscaper and have the trash picked up. We're talking about an average age of New Hampshire of 35 years for some of these HOAs. One of my clients' uh, properties is 50 years old. A 50 year old 100 unit condo complex in New Hampshire, we're talking fully replacing all the insulation, moving from electric baseboard heat to heat pumps, uh, designing the solar panel installations. We're talking construction management of really, really big projects. And I did that. In addition to managing all the HOA activities, all the maintenance, capital needs, budgets, uh, being the first point of contact for 500 owners. That, I did that for five years. In addition to my full-time job at TomTom, Tom, traveling the world, making these YouTube videos for you, sitting on two BMW boards, um, everything else I've done, maintaining my blog. Um, I, the problem I had property management, wasn't necessarily the work, the work was fine. I could do it in about six, eight hours per day. Uh, so it was nights and weekends. Um, it's busier in the summertime uh, versus wintertime. Right now it's slow, it's quiet. I might get four emails a day in the wintertime uh, or four phone calls a day in the wintertime. The problem with property management is it pays too goddamn little. <laughs> uh, and so if you're a client watching this, let's take a step back here. You know, our pricing structure was about $20 per unit to manage your property. $20 a unit per month. Uh, and you're like, wow, Adam, you know, that's a lot of units. That's supposed to be big, big money. Yeah, but my commission was about 30 to 45% of the intake because other people work at our firm that do some financial management. We have insurance, we have overhead. Um, I split it with my broker. So for being on call 24 seven, having no backup, managing hundreds of units, hundreds of owners, nearly a hundred vendors, working on these massive capital projects, the take home pre-tax, pre-mileage, pre-expenses, pre-cell phone, pre-all of that was about four grand a month, which is a great pay. But when you remember the fact that four grand a month gets taxed. I'm driving all over town. I'm meeting with vendors. I'm being on call for every uh, water leak, bathroom leak, flood, power outage. You know, we had, a, we had a transformer blow up once, took out, you know, 40 units of power. I had to call in sick or take pay time off for my day job and spend two days on site liaising with the fire department, insurance, electric company, independent electrical contractors, 
uh, construction crews to dig up the uh, the lines that have caught on fire, uh, oversee all of that, and then the lingering issues of just repairs, replacements, insurance stuff for the next six to twelve weeks. I don't get a single extra dollar when those pro when those things come up. And so I've been doing that for five years, and I learned a shitload about property management and real estate management, building inspections, uh, real estate transactions. Uh, I, I managed some individual individual rental units as well, but my bread and butter was HOA management. And this time last year, one year ago, I was so burnt out. And I didn't want to quit that job because it was paying me four grand a month. I mean, let's say 2,500 after, after expenses and taxes, but still extra money every month. Heather's point all along was you could do anything else to make $2,900 a month though. You don't have to do this. You don't have to be on call. She's right. She wasn't the, the only distractor. I had myself as well. Always continuing to think why the F am I doing this? but I liked the extra money and I, I really enjoyed project management. I really enjoyed that part of it. So everything all together, in January I started looking for another job. I started with remote jobs and I couldn't find anything that would replace both TomTom Tom and property management that also brought me joy, that also had the right travel, the, the amount of travel requirements I wanted, which actually I wanted a lot of travel. I wanted to go places. I wanted like 25% of travel. They had me managing people, they had me thinking strategically and at the top level of strategy and execution. It didn't have me in that area at all. And it also wasn't global. Everything I came across was like small potato stuff. And at Tom Tom, I've operated at such a high level for so long, I wanted to maintain that. So then I started looking for in-person stuff. Lots of stuff in the Bay Area, lots of stuff in Seattle, lots of stuff in the hottest states that are running out of water, like New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, Nevada. I don't want to live in a state running out of water. I don't want to live in a state with 10% income tax. I don't want to live in a state where it's full of people and I can't escape within an hour. I mean, guys, I left my house and 10 minutes later, I'm in this kind of footage, you know? So it took me 11 months to find three opportunities all at the same time that I wanted to consider evenly. I'm not going to reveal what those are because um, it's not fair to my future employer. But it was a tough choice because there are a lot of ways to spend my years. And I'm in my healthiest part of my life right now. Some would say, yes, yeah, last, yesterday was the healthiest part of my life, but you know what I mean. I am, I am, you know, getting closer to death at every day. And so I don't want to spend work doing bullshit. I want to do work that makes me happy. And I want to go to a place that makes me happy. And I want to have be a place that Heather wants to go and she will spend time in. And so we set out a plan. I bought my house up here for 94 grand. It's worth like 300 now. So we're going to rent it out. We're going to rent the house out. Mortgage is $700 a month. We're just going to rent it out. After a year or two, we're going to start renovating that house and make it a place where we can have a family. So the goal is to return to New Hampshire, have a family. It's a one bedroom house, a two bedroom house, but one's an office. So, you know, we're, we're, we're going to renovate it while we're gone and then return back to it to, you know, have some kids and get back to maybe doing some remote jobs that even if they're less esteem, at least I will um, have proven to myself I'm not a one trick pony. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah, see how we're post peak? All the leaves have fallen off. Um, so we're going to, uh, we had previously scheduled a, a trip to San Francisco to go to Halloween. We went last year for Halloween to SF. She had a great time. So we booked it with points. It's costing us nothing to go back to SF and have a Halloween celebration there. Uh, she's going to be a uh, Yoshi. I'm going to be Princess Peach. It's going to be a great time. Um, we thought for a few weeks in early October that 
we were going to be going out there and canceling our trips to do our plans to do Halloween in Napa and Monterey Bay Aquarium. And instead, we were going to actually be looking at apartments out there. That's no longer on the table, which I'm, I'm okay with. I'm happy about that. I, I, I think that I, I, I lived in San Francisco and I'm not in a rush to get back. Um, even though that was one of the options. Um, when we get back on November the 2nd, we're going to pick up a 20-foot truck. Uh, we're going to load up my bikes in the back of the Ram and another bike in the back of our Tiguan. Oh, they redid this reservoir. This used to be uh, falling apart. They redid it. Nice. Um, we're almost to the fun part, I promise. Uh, we're going to start driving down to Charlotte, North Carolina, where they're not even at peak foliage yet. <laughs> they haven't even had their fall yet. And um, after we arrive, we're going to unpack all of our shit. Then I'm going to ride my GS over to um, Greensboro, uh, South Carolina, and go to the uh, MOA's board meeting strategic planning session for 2023 at the headquarters, but also attend a uh, MOA open board meeting for our members that we're holding that Saturday, the 10th or 11th, I think. Um, and then I'm gonna come back, the two hour drive back home, home in Charlotte. And on the 13th or 14th of November, the road is not closed, hold on. It's not closed though. We'll hop on this for a second. It was not closed before. Uh, it does dead end. I will say with the leaves though, I probably shouldn't be on this with the Michelin Anarchy Adventures, but we'll see. Um, this is the road I was talking about that I've taken people down before and it's a lot of fun, but honestly, it's probably, it's probably gotten worse in the past three years. So who knows? Um, and then 13th or 14th, I started a new job. Uh, I'm not going to say anything about the job description. I'm just going to give you the give you the company for now because it's not a prestigious title like CEO, but no, it's muddy. No bueno. Uh, but it, I'm excited to announce that I'm changing over different industries from consumer hardware mapping, software, and services to a financial tech services company because Charlotte is the financial. Ooh, this is bad. What if I crash when I'm talking about this? Um, you know, Bank of America's headquarters is in Charlotte. A bunch of companies are headquartered in Charlotte. So if, if I get the experience I want at this company, I can stay in Charlotte for a while, you know, five, six years from now and, and move over to a different company in that area. But the company is uh, called Credit Karma. Um, opposed to TomTom, Tom, it's a household name. You know, one of my biggest challenges when I was talking to different companies about changing over to work for them over these past 11 months um, is that Either they didn't know what TomTom Tom was, or they were surprised that we still existed. You know, it's like working for TiVo. TiVo still exists. They're still selling devices. They still sell services, but no one thinks about TiVo anymore as being a real thing. And so, you know, Credit Karma has like 100 to 130 million users uh, in the US. Half of millennials use it. Uh, it's a financial services company highly successful. It's owned by Intuit, the company that makes uh, TurboTax and Quicken and QuickBooks and Mint. And um, that's where I'm going next. Credit Karma. I'm almost certain that every single one of you watching this video has heard of it, as opposed to TomTom, Tom, where only motorcycles list and people in Europe know who it is. Um, and Credit Karma is going to be a new challenge. I will be doing a lot of the similar stuff I've been doing at TomTom. Tom. Uh, strategy, big picture thinking, but all of the work is going to be in the, in the, a group that is responsible for customer satisfaction. No, not tech support, but design, implementation, user experience, service uh, experience, um, yes support uh content ticketing uh you know 
workflow of users as they go through different product services. You know, all of that is under one group whose job is to keep customers engaged, happy, and help them find the answers to the questions that they have. Uh, and that they don't, you know, abandon the process because they couldn't find the right button or didn't get the answer they wanted. And I'll be working with that team. Um, sure, it's more money. Sure, it's a different place. Uh, sure, it's scary. <laughs> um, I was, after I got over the fact that I wasn't able to find something remote that I wanted, I realized that I actually kind of miss having an in-person experience with people in an office. And so, you know, for me, moving to Charlotte with a lower cost of living than New Hampshire, yes, a lower cost of living. Rent there is 1400 a month instead of 3000 a month here. Um, less heating costs, far less miles on my car because my commute is five miles to the office. Cheaper gas prices, cheaper propane prices, uh, lower, lower, um, Everything except for tax. Sales and income tax are going up because I live in a tax-free state. But you know, other than that, it's it's gonna be an experience. I'll be two hours from the MOA headquarters, which is awesome. Um, and I'll be near the Blue Ridge Parkway, two hours from Asheville, two hours from half hours from Tail of the Dragon. Um, Yeah, it's 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 a big effing deal. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 scared. I've moved from Florida to San Francisco to New Hampshire, but I haven't moved in twelve years. I'm now doing it with a wife. Um, you know, we own property together. We, um, you know, we have stuff to move. We have things to do. We don't have kids, but. You know, everything but kids is going to be a thing. So this is going to be my last uh, year in New Hampshire for a while. I don't know if it's going to be two years, five years, ten years. You know, as you guys know that are older than me, ten years goes by really fast. Um, Credit Karma is not a marriage. Um, um, it is a, you know, it, it is a relationship. I'm, I'm taking it very, very seriously. I am going to um, take it, you know, ultimate care in that relationship. I'm going to do my best job, my best effort ever to impress them and, you know, maybe get a promotion. Um, and I, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to miss TomTom Tom a lot, actually. I'm going to miss TomTom Tom very much. Um, you know, writing my uh, my email to um, our team, about 60 people, uh, you know, 60 immediate people on our team, writing that email out, um, it was really hard to hold back tears. You know, 12 years at a company and at a time when, you know, I am hitting a new stride, a new level. I'm operating at a completely, I'm operating at a completely different level than I was a year or two, year or two ago. Uh, totally different level. And to write a letter saying, I'm giving that all up, goodbye. Um, it's hard. I just, you know, I interviewed in the last two weeks, 40 interns for next year. So our early careers program. I spent the whole month of September and October uh, preparing for next year's internship program for the early careers engineer talent. And I had to email them and say, I'm not your person next year. I'm going to get all of this done where you all get offer letters for next year. Well, the top 30 get offer letters. And then it's someone else's thing. And I have to swallow my pride and my ego and remember that it is no longer my responsibility. They are not my responsibility anymore. And that's okay. And the person that replaces me at TomTom, Tom, they might run this program, all of my programs, totally differently. Probably for the better because change is good. And so, uh, at Credit Karma, I'm replacing someone else that was promoted. Change is good. And we all have to sort of like wipe our expectations of what each person does in their role and embrace change and try to acknowledge it, 
embrace and react. But you can't plan. You just have to roll with it. Um, so I am going to probably start riding year round. <laughs> uh, maybe I won't ride in January. It's very muddy, by the way. I can't really uh, go crazy today. I don't want to drop the bike. Um, I probably won't ride in January if it gets if it's if it's frigid cold. But the lows are in the 30s, which is like 40 or 50 degrees warmer than it is in New Hampshire lows. So you now I've ridden to work here when it was you know 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, depending on the humidity, we'll see how it goes. But the fact that Heather and I will be uh, closer to some of her family. But also, I'll be six hours from my dad, six hours from my mom. Uh, you know, that's exciting. For the first time in 16, 17 years, I will be an afternoon's drive from spending the night or the weekend at my dad's house. I haven't had that since I was 19 years old. And, um, you know, family is the only reason I'm going back to this area. I'm going for the job. I'm going for my career. I'm going to progress and gain new skills and try to be challenged different ways. And I don't know if I'm gonna succeed. <laughs> but those of you that have been watching this channel since 2007, wow, thank you. Ben, I know Ben has been watching since 07. Thank you, Ben. Uh, if you've been watching this channel since I bought my Golf R in 2013 and 2015, Thank you. If, if you've watched this channel since I bought my first GS in 2016, also a while, thank you. But everyone that's been here since 2018, 2019, the last four years, you've only known Adam with you know this scenery, this kind of riding, and it's gonna be different. The, the basement garage is going away, the fall foliage is going away, the snow is going away, the house, the lake, the, the, the Vermont rides, the Vermont rallies are going away. But again, you got to embrace change and roll with it and see what happens. So with that, <laughs> that's the big news. I am nervous. Um, we're gonna see how it goes, right? But uh, for anyone watching, I think it's really important to note, and, 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 and this is not a disclaimer for Credit Karma, um, for at least the first couple of years, um, and I'll inform their HR department if this ever changes, for at least the first couple of years, Credit Karma is my, my one and only priority. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is how I crashed a few years ago, different spot, but I was riding the rear brake and I just, I just got into a rut. Um, Credit Karma is my first, and it's the way it leaves, by the way. I mean, I'm just sliding around these things. Uh, yes, I will make YouTube videos. YouTube is not my income. It's, it's not my priority. It's not my income. So, uh, yeah, I'll have YouTube videos, obviously. Uh, I'll capture the air times when I go on a trip uh, and when I go to rallies and such. Um, that's not changing. But I'm not going to have any... Did this stop working? Yep. This finally stopped working officially. That's working, but that menu button's not working. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, no side, no side projects, no side hobbies. I will remain a volunteer on the MOA board, uh, but I'm not going to be on the Vermont board anymore. I'm not going to do any property management. I'm putting my real estate license on hold in New Hampshire. Um, no photographing events for profit or for, for, you know, everything will be volunteer stuff. Like, yeah, I'll go to the uh, performance center for the GS trophy next year and take photos of people. I'm not charging for that work. I'm just going to go hang out with my friends. Um, so I will maintain a life outside of work, but I'm going to focus a hundred percent on my role at credit karma. And I really want to prove to them that I can do this, prove to myself, I can do this, prove to Heather, I can do with this, do this. And I want to, really do well and um, if you know if I don't upload as much um, it's that I'm just focused and I know you all understand that this is not you know I appreciate you watching these videos but this is kind of turned into a mini podcast and um, 
I'm gonna wrap it up here, but it's been a privilege. All of you in New England that I've ridden with, you know, even down in DC, you know, JVB in Virginia. Um, um, my Quebec family, my BW Quebec Club family up north, um, Yankee Beamers to the south, you know, Frosty Nuts, Jamaica Camp Out, Heath, Pimmy River, uh, my Vermont family, Green Mountain Rally, Puppy Dog Ride, Silver Lake, Carmi, all those things, uh, the Southern Maine family, and uh, the Down East Rally. I, you know, I'm gonna miss all of you guys, all of you. Um, I'm not giving up motorcycling and I'm definitely not giving up what makes me me. And I'm not giving up YouTubing or riding, riding or writing. <laughs> uh, but it, I am gonna be somewhere different. And um, I'm gonna miss you, all of you. All right. Thank you for listening to me ramble for half an hour. Ride safe. Have a good rest of your year. And I'll see you soon.